Hello, this is Sarah Flack, the Education Coordinator at the Child Advocacy Center of the Finger Lakes. Today we're going to be talking about coping skills for kids, why it's important, and how to help kids develop positive coping skills that they can utilize throughout their life. So let's start by why do kids need coping skills? Studies have shown that if coping skills aren't developed at a young age, as children grow up and reach adolescence and then adulthood, their likelihood of turning to drugs and alcohol highly increases. Other negative coping skills include over or under eating, self-harm, risky behavior or aggressive behavior like bullying and fighting, turning to gambling, running away from problems in home, issues with truancy, and defiance. The Center for Disease Control has done many studies on depression, anxiety, and behavior disorders. Of youth aged 3 to 17, 3.2% are diagnosed with depression. 7.1% are diagnosed with anxiety, and 7.4% of those aged 3 to 17 are diagnosed with behavioral problems. What we notice is that at the, as the age of the youth increases, so does the likelihood of a diagnosis of anxiety and depression. Of children, boys typically are more likely, and also among children living below 100% of the federal poverty level, more than uh, one fifth or 22% had a mental, behavioral, or developmental disorder. So structures for children include a separation of parents or separation from family, changes to patterns and routine, moving to a new neighborhood, loss of a loved one, pressure to fit in, managing expectations and schoolwork, overscheduling of activities, and family troubles. Many of these factors occur at one point or another in a child's life, and some of them exist repeatedly. Other stressors may be situations where the family is experiencing homelessness, domestic violence, or relocation, whether that's due to job loss, change in jobs, um, or change in family status. Managing expectations and overscheduling of activities can create a lot of stress and anxiety in children if they are never given the opportunity to have free time or space to simply just reflect or be themselves. Some signs of stress and anxiety if your child is feeling them could be um, a notice of a change in mood swings, some acting out behaviors or defiance, changes in sleep patterns. They could either want to sleep all the time or have difficulty falling asleep. And once falling asleep, they may have difficulty staying asleep. Some physical symptoms and ailments they may experience are things like headaches or chronic stomach aches. And you may also see some other bad patterns. For young children, this typically might look like a reg regression behaviors with bedwetting, thumb sucking, hair twirling, or nail biting. When children get a little older and proceed into adolescence, it could be things like them beginning to lie, testing boundaries, um, bullying, or defying authority. In order to reduce stress, we really wanna help children create some healthy routines and habits. Some things that we wanna really stress are proper amounts of rest, making sure that we're not staying up too late or getting up too early and we're getting a full eight hours of sleep every night. Good nutrition, a well-balanced diet and exercise are key and important aspects. Quality one-on-one -on -one time, this could be with an older sibling, caretaker, or parent. The ability to talk and communicate openly with a trusted adult and the development of healthy coping skills that can be used throughout adolescence and into adulthood.
So there are some short and some long-term um, activities or coping strategies. Those short-term are gonna be those responsive actions, things that we do when we're already feeling stressed or anxious and how we respond to them. Those might include things like walking away, taking a deep breath, getting a hug from a loved one, or creating art. We'll talk about a lot more of those activities as we move on. The long-term are really the preventative actions. So those are the things that we wanna put in place so that we reduce stress going forward. So building things into our daily routines, um, focusing on diet and exercise, rec and leisure activities. So scheduling breaks or, or days and times where we don't have scheduled activities. So maybe your child is very competitive and really enjoys sports, but it comes to a point where they're practicing every day. Making sure to set aside time with family or friends away from that activity so that they can have some downtime is really important. Working on good habits like positive self-talk or meditation and working on expressing gratitude. So some emotion-focused coping skills that we can help with our children and the youth we're working with um, could be things like labeling feelings. So when they're angry, frustrated, or upset, giving them a list of different um, emotions and feelings to select from so that they can really better identify how they're actually feeling. Once we're able to identify how we're feeling, we can then relate um, the behaviors that we're seeing when we're feeling that way and how we would like to improve them. This is really important for our young children who struggle with identifying emotions and feelings. And if they aren't able to identify them, they have a difficult time working through them. Some breathing exercises, focusing on breathing in, inhaling and exhaling slowly and deeply. Um, some young children refer to this as belly breathing, where they might place their hand on their belly to feel that rhythm and really just focus on that rhythm. Exercising or yoga. We also have reading, so taking a break to read something that they enjoy, um, just to give them a focus on another uh, item or object. Same thing with artwork. It's a good way to express how somebody's feeling or as an outlet for creativity and imagination playing a game or music that they enjoy, just something that helps them feel happy um, and have fun, and positive self-talk. So making those I am statements or I can statements just kind of reassures a child of what they actually are capable of and focuses them on what they are doing well. One recommendation that I have that would be really helpful, especially in a time like this, would be to create a calm down kit for your child. Um, this could be a shoe box, a bucket, um, any small um, thing just to store it in. It could be even like a small backpack or a drawstring bag. And then filling that with items that help your child relax. This way they have this, um, this toolbox, if you will, that they can just turn to whenever they need it. Some things that you might want to include would be things like a stress ball to squeeze. Um, in the image, you know, it shows a handmade one that's made with a, a balloon and you can fill that with rice or flour or any other um, sensory object that your child enjoys. You could include some lotions or some aromatherapy scents that the child likes and that are calming. A uh, picture of a loved one or something from a happy memory, whether that's a little memento or token from a trip, somebody that they care about, a pet, um, a journal entry. Could also include a list of activities that they enjoy. So maybe this is something that they've already thought about. Um, some of these activities you might be able to actually include in the kit. In this example, they have some Batman Lego books, um, an article of clothing, they have headphones and music. They also have some like sensory objects just to look at. So there's, you can kind of see like this bottle filled with what looks like like a blue liquid and some beads. So that's something that they just kind of tip up, up and down almost like as a timer or something that is interesting. Some other ones that I've seen 
um, bubbles, lots of coloring, a small journal with paper um, and a pencil so that they can write their feelings and emotions and just kind of get those feelings and emotions out. So this is just something that you can put together with your child to have them really think about, you know, what helps them calm down, what do they enjoy, and then make sure that it's all kind of together and in a, in a location that they can easily access when they need it. Problem-focused coping skills. So these are actually going to dive in where some of those other ones were more of avoidance and not necessarily that they're going to avoid the problem indefinitely, but just a way to like de-stress maybe or, um, you know, turn their thought process around where these are really going to focus on the problem and what is actually bothering them or causing them stress. Um, these could be asking another adult or even another peer for some help and support. It could be engaging in problem solving. So what is the problem? Um, what's working, what's not working, what else can we do to overcome this problem, or creating a list of pros and cons. So you see this especially in adolescents when youth are determining whether or not they want to participate in an activity. If they want to try out for the new high school musical, what colleges they want to go to, if they want to be in a committed relationship with somebody or not. So creating a list of pros and cons really just helps them focus on why do they want to do this and why might they a better informed decision. So right now in the middle of COVID-19 outbreak, obviously we're seeing a lot of stress, um, stress with adults and stress with our children. Kids aren't in school, they're not able to see their friends, their family, loved ones. Um, they're not able to participate in activities that they usually relied on. And so there's a lot of things that are coming into play. Um, if you're feeling overwhelmed, know that there are local agencies that are willing to help support you and your family at this time of need. So please reach out to a social worker or a professional in your community for help and assistance. Talk to your children about what's going on in terms that are appropriate for their level. Be sure to set aside time to keep in touch and connect one-on-one -on -one with your children, as well as to help them keep in touch with other family and friends, whether that's through email, phone calls, a social media platform, Skype, or Zoom itself. Let your children know and understand that it's okay and normal for them to feel sad, stressed, worried, or confused, and that even you as their adult also might feel this way. Talk about your feelings and shortcomings and how you're going to work together to get through this time. Other things to consider would be decreasing the time you and your family spend watching or listening to upsetting media coverage. A lot of times our news focuses on all the negatives and it can be very overwhelming for us as adults. So imagine being a child, hearing all the same things and not understanding what half of them mean. And then seeing that your adults who, are, who you look to for reassurance are also stressed and upset. Limiting the time that you are spending on media coverage and news as well as what they're hearing can be very helpful. Set aside that time to really talk to them, um, ask them how they're feeling, and ask how you can help make them less stressed. Stay at home, maintain a healthy lifestyle with proper nutrition and exercise. Some useful tips. When you notice your child is feeling stress, prompt your child. Let them know that sometimes people feel bad and that that's okay, but that there are ways that we can work through it together. Encourage them to try one of their helpful and, and healthy coping strategies. When you notice your child is beginning to use these coping strategies in 
a successful way, be sure to praise them and let you let them know that you noticed what they did and that you were proud that they were able to problem solve and work through their feelings and emotions on their own. Whether the event is successful or not in terms of coping, be sure to debrief afterwards. Your child may have a difficult day um, doing completing homework on online or with feeling left out or like they're not getting enough attention or just with missing friends and family. Whether they handle it appropriately or not, it's important to talk about what's bothering them and how they can improve in the future or what they did well so that they are more likely to continue to do those coping skills later on. Here are some other helpful resources that I'd like to share with you. Many of these sites give a variety of different images, um, some suggested coping skills, some statistics on other things that you can do. I really like this image to the left and you can actually Google search it. So the 50 coping skills for kids, um, it's just a one page that you could print out or even save on their computer. Um, you can put this in their toolbox and it gives 50 different ideas of things that kids could do if they're feeling stressed. Um, sometimes they might not be able to think uh, about something they want to do or decide. So with all these little images, it kind of helps them be able to find something that they want to try at that point. And maybe some of them they can't do and some of them they can, but they're all pretty simple and it's just a cute visual. I hope you got some ideas and are feeling a little more comfortable with talking to your children moving forward and helping them work through some of their emotions. If you would like to email me with any further questions, my email is sarah at cacfingerlakes.org. And I hope to see and hear from anybody soon.